everybody, my name is Wellens and we are playing Outer Wilds today, a open world mystery about a solar system trapped in an endless time loop. I think that's really our only primary objective here, to figure out why and how to stop the time loop perhaps. Basically, we're playing as a new recruit to a space program and we're being sent out to space to find out the mysteries of the world. I'm actually a little bit worried right now because I think this game is going to be a little bit out of my comfort zone. It's probably going to be more sandboxy and non-linear and open world than pretty much anything I've played on the channel before. Because I think the focus of this game is really on space exploration and the sense of adventure and intrigue and mystery, not really on like a really tight linear narrative. So I don't know what's going to happen to me commentary wise, but um, this is published by Annapurna Interactive, who's basically my favorite indie games publisher of the past few years, so I'm pretty willing to unquestioningly play anything they put out. Oh. Whoa. Uh, are we on Earth? Hello. That seems like some kind of planet to me. And something is trailing it. Okay. Ooh. Roast Marshmallow. Oh god, no! Still edible though. <laughs> How about just above the fire? Yeah, yeah. That's good. <laughs> okay. Um... Alright. Slate. Oh. Okay, yeah, we're not on Earth. <laughs> there is our pilot. Back from your pre-launch camp out under the stars, I see. So it's launch day, eh? Seems like only yesterday you joined the space program. And suddenly, here you are, leaving on your first solo voyage. What do you say? Ready to get this beauty off the ground? It's all fueled up and ready to go. You're sure you fixed the retro rockets? That was only a problem one time, and then maybe a few times after that. But hey, no reason to dwell on the past, right? Anyway, you'll need to get the launch codes from Hornfells at the observatory before you can lift off. Just bring those here once you've said your goodbyes or whatever. In this case, I don't even think I'm human, right? It's definitely not a given. The observatory... What was that? Something just flew by in the background. Oh. This is our launch rocket? Okay. <laughs> we just woke up. The jumping requires a little bit of effort. Micah. Hey, it's you! Slate said you're blasting off in your ship today. I'm really excited to see the launch. Aren't you gonna go into space, aren't you? You better not change your mind. I hear you and Slate beefed up a model ship. Can I see it? Yeah, we recalibrated the controls and installed better thrusters. Want to give it a test drive? Slate says it's just like the real thing, only less likely to start a fire. Try to land on one of those geyser pools. Show me what you got. Geyser pools? Fly model ship. Uh... Oh, wow, wow, wow. Whoa! <laughs> oh. My god. There's thrusters that go up or down. Oh! Oh! 
I'm really sorry. <laughs> Should I try again? I guess so. We have to land in the geyser pool when there's no geyser, right? So we gotta wait a little bit here. Oh god! No! No, I can fix this! My thing is flipped! <laughs> Maybe I should just reset. Yeah. That wasn't really working out, was it? Oh god! Now I got the same problem again. I gotta come back down. <laughs> Why am I so bad at this? Okay, one last try. Is the geyser are gonna come up? Oh! I still missed. There we go. I think they wanted me to land on the one with the flag though, not the one with the pool. <laughs> okay, I've had my fun. Thank you. Wow, that was just like the time the external fuel tanks exploded on re-entry. <laughs> you'll, you'll be okay flying the big one, right? Uh, maybe. <laughs> We gotta go find Hornfells. Launch tower. Hello. Porphyry. Porphy? Hey yo, hatchling. I hear you're leaving us to seek adventure amongst the stars. When you return, let's you, me, and Gossen open up a bottle of the good stuff. I'm only seeking adventure amongst one star, actually. Other stars are too far away. Another metaphor ruined in the name of scientific accuracy. Nevertheless, I do hope you enjoy your travels. Good luck. Thank you. I guess that's his place. It's a little bit floaty here. The gravity is not... It's not 1G, probably. Outer Wilds Ventures presents postcards from orbit. Rutile. You're actually blasting off in that thing, huh? I'm told my odds of survival are statistically quite high. Yeah, the space program certainly come a long way. I should probably thank you for causing fewer flash fires than your predecessors. By the way, good luck with those retro rockets. I think I'll need it. Thank you. Oh, it's like a presentation. This projector is linked to our Sky Shutter satellite which is currently orbiting Timber Hearth. The satellite is equipped with two onboard cameras. See if you can take a snapshot of our village. Okay. Uh... Rear view. Oh. Oh, wow. It's taking a picture every moment, because it keeps moving around. Cool. This pilot seat, used by pioneering astronaut Feldspar, is all that remains of our inaugural flight into space. Although it's been argued such a distinction requires a breathtakingly liberal definition of flight, that day will nevertheless always be remembered as landmark achievement in Parthian history. It's like a mini museum here. A lot of little gadgets. I'm the latest recruit. And they're letting me go on a mission. Does that mean that they send the youngest ones so they can go die and they don't lose the good people? I hope not. <laughs> okay. A lot of people here. Oh, this is the geyser pool! Yeah. Marl. So it's launch day, huh? I was gonna miss you. Speaking of launch day, I was thinking about it, and the platform those ships launch from is getting old. Isn't it about time you build a new, less flammable one? The big tree in the village would just be the perfect choice. I wouldn't mind helping out the space program, just say the word. The launch pad is flammable? Ha! <laughs> you didn't realize? 
Don't worry, it's held up for all the launches so far. It'll definitely be fine for yours, probably. How reassuring. Nace? Hello there, Space Cadet. I hear you're leaving the crater today. If you meet any of the other travelers up there, remind them to take proper care of their instruments, won't you? Tell me about the travelers' instruments. Oh, sure. I made all of their instruments, you know. Let me see. There's Church's drums, Rebex banjo, and Gabro's flute. And Feldspar's harmonica, of course, though Feldspar's been missing for a long time. Sometimes it feels like just yesterday they were playing their harmonica around the campfire. Anyway, you hear music in space? That'll be one of the space program's other travelers. If you feel like company, you can always pull out your signal scope and track them down. Good to know. Trouble is, every time a Harthian leaves for outer space, that's one less musician in our orchestra. So, did you need something? Where is the observatory? It's questions like that what makes us worried about you going up into space on your own, you know. The observatory is up the path behind the waterfall. There are a couple of signs marking the way, but really, you just keep going up and then hook a right when you get to the Zero-G Cave. Zero-G Cave. Okay, so there's a waterfall here. Over there. Oh, yeah, a sign right here. Okay. Oh, it's daytime! I've been taking so long, it's daytime now. We can't go into any of these houses, can we? Okay. Tefra. Hello, astronauts! If it isn't my favorite troublemaker. We wanted to play hide and seek, but Moraine won't let us borrow their signal scope because it's really delicate and not supposed to be thrown around like that. Hey, hey! Can we use your signal scope? Can we? Can we please? We'll even let you be it! Sure, let's play. Woohoo! Okay, here are the rules. Galena and me will hide with these radios, and you'll use your signal scope to find us. Last one to be found wins. Okay, close your eyes and start counting. It's like a mini tutorial here, huh? Frequency, hide and seek. <laughs> okay. Will I know that I'm getting closer? Oh. So this will be how I find things in space? No? We talked to you already. Now I'm good. Take care of yourself in space. I thought there was an unknown object. Yeah, like... Somewhere here? Maybe we gotta go around a little bit? Uh-oh! <laughs> Fell in the water. Maybe we'll find this one first. This one is a little bit further away, but we have a better idea of... Oh! Wait, what? It turned green just now. Uh... Can we do anything about this, or... Maybe it's not this. I was hoping we could jump up onto that. Yeah, it's... There. Man, I'm really bad at hide and seek, apparently. Oh, there they are. One of them. Finally. Oh, no. <laughs> Maybe I can drop down from here instead. Yeah? Seems a little bit safer. Yeah. Oh, you found me. But my hiding spot was super good. Don't forget, you have to find both of us, okay? 
Alright. Where is the other one? Somewhere over there. You get- you hear music whenever you're doing it right. Are they inside the house? No. I won? I'm happy. Thanks for playing with us. You didn't win. I won. <laughs> okay, well that was a thing. Dang, they were hiding right there. Okay, well, continuing on our little trek here to say bye to everybody. Zero G cave up ahead. Spinal. Fishing rhyme, fishing rhyme. Singing helps me pass the time. You're leaving the crater? Guess we'll all be a little bit busier without you around to lend a hand. The big water planet. Giant's deep. That's where I'd go. Why's that? One time, after the rest of the village had left to sleep, and it was just the two of us sitting around the campfire, Yavel told me about their first trip to Giant's Deep. They landed their ship easily enough in the waves, but couldn't see too far down, on account of how murky the water was, I guess. Too dark. Gavra wants to see what lay beneath the surface, so they decided to travel deeper. They traveled down and down. But suddenly, Gavra couldn't go any further. <laughs> oh, tell me more. I will, I was just pausing dramatically. As though exercising a will of its own, the water was refusing to let Gabriel go any deeper. It held Gabriel back, almost as if it were trying to protect them from something. And then, in the terrible darkness, Gabriel saw it. The tentacle of some hideous beast! <laughs> was there sap wine involved in Gabriel's campfire story? Come to think of it, don't you have somewhere you should be exploring that isn't here? Okay. Giant's Deep. That seems like it's one of the planets that we can visit. Oh, wow. What's our planet called? I know we're the Harthians. But what are we called? Observatory. What are you doing? Oh, Arcos. Hi, astronaut. You know the patch of ghost matter inside this fence? Gosen said it used to be bigger when they were a hatchling, because ghost matter evaporates. It just takes a super long time to go away. I hope there's still ghost matter in the village when I'm a grown up. Ghost matter is awesome. Ghost matter is super cool. It'll burn the heck out of you. Yeah, I heard touching it hurts so bad. It feels like your whole hand's on fire. Try not to walk into any in space, okay? That sounds bad and painful. There's like planets blocking the sun and stuff. Ghost matter, huh? Can I throw a rock at it? Danger! Inside this fence is a pocket of ghost matter, a strange and impossibly cold substance that's invisible to the naked eyes. The good news is that you can detect ghost matter with a camera. Hmm. Moving through ghost matter is uniquely painful and will probably kill you. Don't complain to me if you hurt yourself fooling around. Oh, so it kind of looks like Northern Lights, from our perspective anyway, yeah. Okay, but we can't see it, so hopefully we'll have our own camera once we launch off. Can't get up there. It's been several days already and I still haven't gotten to the observatory. <laughs> Let me just look around a little bit. Pretty. Moraine. Hmm? Oh, hello, astronaut. This is good weather for your launch, right? That's lucky. 
Any good sounds from space today? There are. My signal scope is set to the Outer Wilds Venture frequency, so I'm listening to the Traveler's music. Last night, I heard Rebik's banjo coming from Brittle Hollow. I hope that means they're safe. I can hear different planets too. It depends on what time of day or night it is, since different planets are in the sky at different times. Signal scopes are cool. Hmm. Can we listen to music too? Something's there, huh? Maybe if we explore that planet, we can find out. Oh, we only have two channels for now. Two frequencies. Okay. Cool. Now... Is Hornfells the last person I'm looking for here? Hey, come say hi to your old flight coach before your launch. I've got zero-g training set up if you want a refresher. Go son. Hey, I thought I might see you before the big launch. Nerves getting the better of you? I'm a little nervous, yeah. Good. Everyone should be a bit nervous going into space. I got cocky during my first flight and nearly put a new crater in the moon. Still, I was never as green as you. Hey, I've gotten better. Think so, do you? Feel like proving it to your old flight coach? There is a satellite, which is definitely not just a piece of broken mining equipment, set up down in the zero-g cave in need of repairs. If you're looking for a little last-minute zero-g practice, head down the lift and into the cave. Or don't, so as long as you're confident, you can make ship repairs in space. Okay. One repaired satellite coming up. Cool, get to it. And try not to concuss yourself right before your first launch. The cave... This is the cave, right? Whatever G we're in right now, it's not zero. But now we'll be going into zero G. Which might actually be easier for us to move around in. Oh, look at that. It doesn't seem like it's truly zero just yet, though. Maybe we're not deep enough into the cave? Here we are. Oh, it's just like that model ship that we were playing with. We just gotta figure this out. Up? Hey. Tough. Hey, hey. Nice of you to drop down. I'm getting some zero-g time in. So are we going in there? In the cave? Mm. What? No, I'm fine. Great. Great, I'm fine. You don't look fine. Well, you know I hate that cave. So I don't even know why you're making me talk about it. Pugh, now I've got hand sweats. <laughs> Sorry about that. Oh. Give me the dirt. Some fresh dirt? Not much happening down here lately. Let me think. Come to think of it, Tech Tite saw something crash outside of the village crater earlier. That's new and different. Is anything on fire? Probably only a little. Tech Tite checked out the crash site with the old Firewatch scout launcher and saw smoke, and so they headed over to stamp out any leftover fires. Well, I better get back to work. This ore is not gonna mine itself, you know. Ah, we're in 0.4G right now. Okay. Here we are, here we are. We'll take it slow. That is not taking it slow, but we're fine. Now it's 0 0.3. Will I know the satellite when I see it? Now it's zero. Oh god. Floating all over the place. I don't have unlimited fuel though, so let's be careful here. Whoa. 
Lock on. Velocity matched. Oh! Okay, match the velocity. We gotta repair this and all that good stuff. Oh dear, I am so good at this. Let me just stand here. I can't even do that because I'm freaking zero G right now. <laughs> Just hold on. There we go. Now we got one. How do I roll over? Oh, here we go. We got more things that need repairing here. Let's go. Satellite node. Good. Good, good, good. Now we gotta find the third one, which is... Is it inside? That's not a pipe. <laughs> We're just putting tape on the cables. Is that really alright? But cool, we are doing good enough with the simulation that we can at least repair the satellite. Which is something we'll need to do in space probably. So it's gonna get a little practice in. Oh, I gotta get out of here now. Fuel is not unlimited after all. It's okay, bumping into things is okay. Uh, if I want to get back up, this dude is here. How did I get back up again? Here we go. I did it! Nicely done! Of course, it'll be a bit more stressful when you're hurt hurtling through space. But just remember your training and try not to hit anything big. I can see you're itching to get off this rock, so go get the launch codes from the observatory and get out of here already. Best of luck out there, and hey, try to avoid getting yourself killed now that I've put so much time into training you, got it? I'll try my best. Thank you, Master. Observatory is... This way? But I thought we came from this way. No, we came from the bridge. The observatory is... Right... Right here. Here we go. Whoa. Outer Wilds Ventures, Timber Hearth's first and only space program, was founded to explore the farthest reaches of our solar system. Feldspar was the first Hearthian to be international intentionally launched into space. That sounds like somebody has been unintentionally launched before. <laughs> they completed the first orbit around Timber Hearth and later made the first of what would be many landings on our moon, the Adel Rock. Hornfells, Gosen, Feldspar, Esker, Slate. The old timers. Founding members. Big thanks to these additional founding members of Outer Wilds Ventures, without whom we would never have gone off the ground. Matthew Steinhauer, Ben Etherington, Critiop the Pie. Oh, are these like backers or something? Because these seem like real names. Oh, yeah. This remarkably intact statue was carved by the Nomai, an ancient species who dwell in our solar system thousands of years ago. The statue provides us with our most detailed look yet at the Nomai, who appear to have been covered with a layer of fur. 
Note the decorative jewelry that has been carved as a part of the antlers. Although their artifacts and structures have been found on almost every planet in this solar system, we still have no idea where the species came from, or what happened to them. Oh. That's strange. There's like a face here. But it also kind of seems like a face looking down here. Or is that just kind of like the neck? I guess so. Hey, hey, it's my favorite astronaut. Launch day at last, huh, buddy? It's the translator tool's inaugural flight, too. I'm so excited, it's making me nauseous. Just think, you'll be able to translate any nomite text you want, anywhere you are. The two of us put a lot of hours into inventing that tool, so don't break it, okay? <laughs> oh, jeez, do not break it. <sighs> Ignore me, okay? I'm just nervous, and I'm not even the one going into space. How are you feeling? I'm terrified. Oh, don't let me make you nervous. You've been training for this day since we were hatchlings, remember? You'll do great. I promise. So what's the dirt? You here to see the new Nomai statue? Of course. Heh, <laughs> I knew you'd want to see it before you headed off. Hornfell's just finished prepping it for display today. Amazing, isn't it? Makes me wish we could see what a real-life Nomai looks like. But I guess this is as close as we'll ever get. Check it out. Looks like they had fur. Fur is weird. This is the first fully intact statue ever found, you know. And for how old it is, it's in great shape. Jeez, oh, I got a little carried away there. Go on, you have a ship to launch. Take care of yourself out there, you hear? Hey, who knows? Maybe we'll be running into one of these guys live. This piece of Nomai writing was essential to deciphering their unique language. Although this text is linear, Nomai text often branches off from a central point. Interestingly, each branch tends to be written by a different author. Oh. Aside from the dwellings and structures they built, the Nomai also made art. This decorated pottery was discovered on Brittle Hollow. Some ancient Nomai art depicts strange animals, foreign celestial objects, and other subjects that can't be found in our solar system, which makes us wonder whether the Nomai originated elsewhere in the universe or simply had vibrant imaginations. Were the Nomai born in our solar system? Or were they born among other stars and planets? And if they were, how and why did they come here? These are just some of the questions we hope to answer through further Xenoarchaeological expeditions. Which is what we're doing. Oh. What you see here are parts of the Nomai skeleton. We can tell from their skulls that they possess antlers and, quite unusually, only three eyes. <laughs> Very unusual. The Nomai body was most likely adapted for living exclusively on land. The differences in Nomai's anatomy, such as their shockingly fragile bone structure, show us that Harthians couldn't have descended from Nomian ancestors. Nomayan ancestors? It's not clear where the Nomai originated from, or why they disappeared. We hope to find more clues to this puzzle as we explore our solar system. The Nomai technology brought back from space by our astronauts has been a great boon to Outer Wilds ventures, allowing us to modify expedition gear in exciting and new ways. For example, the Little Scout now boasts a warp retrieval capability that allows astronauts to recall their scouts almost instantly. This has dramatically reduced the number of scouts lost to the depths of space. So we're taking their technology and using it for our own stuff. There's a lot here. This crystal is from a Nomai ruin. It seems to create a local gravity distortion and was most likely used to traverse steep surfaces. Try it out. Oh, wow. How do I... Oh. Again? That's insane. Wow. Some other drawings and ruins. Oh, okay. Hey!
This anglerfish specimen was found attached to the landing gear of one of our ships that flew close to the dark bramble. It appears well suited to living in dark places with minimal atmosphere. Oh. You remind me of the one I saw in Soma. If a star is massive enough, it will continue to fuse carbon into even heavier elements like iron. Ultimately, the star will collapse under its own gravity and then explode in a violent event called a supernova. Based on Chert's observations, that will one day be the fate of our own sun. As the star's core contracts, it gets hotter, causing the outer layers to expand. The star has become a red giant. When the core is hot enough, it starts to fuse helium into carbon. Well, this seems pretty consistent with our own astronomy, right? On Earth? Our sun generates light and heat by fusing hydrogen into helium. As it grows older, it runs out of hydrogen and starts to contract. And then becomes a red giant. And then a supernova happens. Oh. The strange rock moving around in this grotto appears to react to conscious observation. The level-headed among us realize there must be some sort of optical illusion at play. But Gabriel claims the rock exists in all possible states until it is observed, whatever that means. Whatever is actually happening, both sides of this debate agree the effect is extremely creepy. It's like Schrodinger's rock? Ah! Ah! Oh, that's creepy. That's creepy. That's just space things, man. Watch closely, these balls move on their own. The ground is perfectly level, so what do you think causes this spooky motion? The answer is the moon. As it orbits our planet, the atoll rock's gravity pulls on objects from different directions. In fact, it's pulling on you right now. It's not moving anymore. Oh, it is moving a little bit, back the other way. Okay, that's cool. Oh, I think we've gotten sidetracked long enough. There you are. I just finished pre-flight observations and local conditions are good. Time to get our newest astronaut off the ground. And you'll be our first astronaut ever, equipped with a Know My Translator tool. I confess, I've been giddy all day just thinking about it. We're better equipped than ever to unravel the mysteries of the Nomai. You and Hal should be very proud of your work. Tell me, what's your plan once you're in space? Hmm... Maybe I'll start with something a bit more familiar. I'll meet up with the other travelers. You're going to check in with them, are you? Not a bad plan. No one knows the solar system better than our astronauts. This is the solar system? Oh, let's see. Oh, our solar system. Not Earth's. Churn is on the Hourglass Twins, Rebecca is on Brittle Hollow, and Gabro is on Giant's Deep, last I checked. And, well, there is Feldspar, obviously. But of course, we don't know where they are, or if they're even alive. Feldspar has been lost for a very long time, I'm afraid. On a more cheerful note, you'll find Esker Station on the Atoll Rock. They're not a traveler so much as a lunar local, but I'm sure they'd appreciate a visit, nevertheless. Well then, looks like all that's left is to send you off. All in all, it's a fine day for a launch. I'm ready to die in space. I'm not one for superstition, but isn't that kind of unlucky to say before a launch? At any rate, here are the launch codes. Try not to worry too much. Our ships are every bit as safe as Slate could be persuaded to make them. Best of luck out there. Let me know if I can help you with anything. Looks like Morse code. Okay. So I noticed that so far, in all of our conversations, the issue of the universe being stuck in a time loop hasn't really come up yet. Maybe that's something we'll just have to see happen firsthand. Hornfell's observations. This is incredible. At first, I thought the points of light in this image were stars, but they're not. They're galaxies. 
and this image covers just a tiny patch of the whole sky, which means the universe contains at least a thousand times more galaxies than we previously imagined. I... I think I need to sit down. Space. It's always a very fascinating topic, huh? Because it's a place that we don't know too much about. Oh, lovely. Oh, this is really lovely. Definitely not Earth. Okay, so we are on Timber Hearth. And there's the Hourglass Twins. Earlier, they mentioned that somebody is there. And Brittle Hollow. Maybe that's a moon around Brittle Hollow. Dark Bramble. Giant's Deep. I think there's an astronaut on all these planets. Yeah. Rotate view. Can I go closer? Hollow's Lantern. One of their moons. Cool. This one also has a moon. Whoa, this one looks like a freaking tree! How are we gonna traverse that? The moon doesn't have a name. So maybe it hasn't been discovered yet. What's this? Oh, the Lunar Traveler, or... No, maybe not. Ash Twin. Ember Twin. Oh my god, they're like, rotating with each other. It's insane. And we're gonna get to visit all these places. Isn't that exciting? The Yaddle Rock. Giant's Deep. Oh, this is what we saw earlier when we woke up. There's some, like... Stuff. Just rotating around it. And there's a storm here. And a lot of moons. Earlier, the fisherman was telling me about how dangerous this place is. Okay. That was a lot of talking to people here. But it's the last time we're gonna be here, right? Because we're gonna go explore. Whoa. Whoa! Oh, that's the stuff I did today! What? Oh, the guy's gone. Did it take my memories from what I did today? Oh... Although their artifacts and structures have been found on almost every planet, we have no idea where they came from or what happened to them. <sighs> Feeling all fired up already. Let's see if we can figure this out, huh? Hey, hey, so did you get a good look at that Nomai statue? The statue looked at me and opened its eyes! Whoa, whoa, the statue was doing what? So its eyes opened, and then you saw images from your own memories and glowing lights flying around? You mean like a hallucination? Listen, no offense, but are you sure you're ready to launch? Like, medically speaking? No, that statue is definitely weird. I mean, if you're saying it happened, then I guess maybe it did, but why? Didn't you make the statue? Who made it? Hornfells tried everything to get the statue's eye to open. And nothing like this has ever happened to them. I don't think you're gonna get any answers from the museum statue, but Gavro said they were going back to Giant's Deep. Don't know which island they're on, though. Maybe they'd be able to tell you more? On the other hand, Gabro's, you know, Gabro. So maybe you'd be better off searching for more info on your own. Jeez, now I'm really jealous you're going into space. Hey, see if you can use our translator tool to find out more about the statue, okay? Good luck and safe flying. Oh. I thought somebody carved the statue. 
somebody from our own planet, but we probably picked it up off somewhere else. So that statue was made by the Nomai, and that's why it's doing weird things. Kind of makes me feel like a chosen one, huh? We'll just have to see. Tefra, you're back. Are you going into space and never coming back like Feldspar did? Don't worry, I'll come back. That's what Feldspar said too, but they never did. Hornfels will be really sad if you don't come back, like how sad it makes them to talk about Feldspar. So you should make sure you don't get lost in space too. I won't. I won't. So Feldspar is kind of like their Armstrong. The first Parthian to ever go to space. Intentionally. Looks like you're ready for a takeoff. The excitement of a launch is fun and all, but I can't wait to get back to working on the new ship. We're working on fixing the autopilot's avoidance system for this one. Uh, sorry. <laughs> alright. Meet me up there, alright? Oh my god. Are we ready? This is our ship? It looks kind of... Hastily put together, <laughs> to say the least. But here goes nothing. Oh boy. Little Scout. See beyond the horizon, illuminate dark areas, detect hazards, test the environment. Timber Hearth. Rumor mode. Oh, like what we can check out? The one and only Harthian village, as well as the main source of explosions on this planet. The Nomai statue in the observatory looked at me. Hal says it's never opened its eyes before. So we can choose to check out different things here. Gabro? Oh. Gabro might be at Giant's Deep. A cave at the very center of Timber Hearth used by Outer Wilds Ventures. Yeah, I repaired the satellite for the dude. Esker is on Adel Rock. Yeah, why don't we start small and go here first? Can we do that? Uh, map mode? How do I add a marker? Yeah, there's a lot going on here, but why don't we just set off? And we'll worry about this later. Yeah? Okay. I just wonder, because earlier I thought we could set a marker on this, but I don't see a marker setter thingy here. Space. Mark location on HUD. No. Oh, we can't mark it yet because we haven't been there. Okay, that makes sense. Fine. Cool. Oh, look, it's that rock that helps us travel on the land. Oxygen refill. Spot a tree, walk towards it, breathe and enjoy. <laughs> Got some little trees here. I'm sure that really helps with the oxygen. Man, it's 1.8 G right now. Goodness. Okay. Are we gonna be okay? Here we go. Oh! Oh! People, we're in space! That's the sun, but I don't think we should be heading towards the sun, alright? We have liftoff! Can we go to Adel Rock? Yes! Right here. Uh, I can engage an autopilot, but let me see if I can try to do this on my own first. Do I just crash land? Oh no! Oh no! Let me land, please.
Did we do it? <laughs> well, that was a really short trek, but hey. We're starting small, right? Yeah? And now that we're here... Oh, we can open the map at any time. I love this map. Okay, let's see if we can't find Esker. Outer Wilds frequency. Ooh, that's really far. That's not Esker. Hey, how am I gonna find my... Am I gonna be able to find my ship later on? Oh, do we need a camera? Wasn't there something about how if we walk into the ghost stuff, ghost matter, we're gonna get hurt? How do we refuel, by the way? I'm not quite sure. Oh, check that out. Check that map out. On the left side. That's really cool. But um, I think we might have landed on the wrong side of the moon here because I can't really get anywhere. So in that case, let me see if I can take off and land on the other side. Maybe that would make it a little bit easier for us. Scout launcher. Launch scout. Oh, maybe that's like for dangerous planets. Okay. Oh, it's like a camera or something. Yeah, here we go. Esco's gotta be there. Let's try. No. Whoa. Good enough. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not quite the best lander here, but hey. I'm not seeing any pictures on my scout at all. It's okay, I think we're good. Let's see if this is a little bit better. Unidentified signal nearby. Let's go! Trees. Oxygen. Hey, oh, Esker! Excuse me. Oh, hey, it's you! Ground control didn't tell me you were launching. Long time no see. Actually, I guess it's been a long time since I've seen anyone. Don't the other travelers come by? The lunar outpost saw more traffic back when our ships were less sophisticated and needed more frequent repairs. Nowadays, it's mostly used to keep a set of eyes on things. Sometimes Trick comes by to say hi, but Gabro is Gabro. And you know how Rebic feels about unnecessary space flight. Don't go! Uh, I mean, anything else you wanted to ask? Seems lonely here. A little. I'm in touch with ground control. Hornfells and Gosen, mostly. But they radio up to chat now and then. And when ground control forgets I'm up here, and they usually do, I launch my little scout at the village. They forget about you? I don't blame them. For one, I don't check in as often as the other travelers, since I'm always in one place. And it's not so bad up here, really. At least it's peaceful and quiet. You don't always get that in our solar system. Let alone in our village. What is this place? Haha, <laughs> very funny. Oh, stars above, you're serious, aren't you? That's just depressing. No, I know where we are. We're on Adol Rock. <sighs> Welcome to the Lunar Outpost. Which apparently, the space program doesn't bother to teach anyone anymore. When we first started Outer Wilds, travelers used to bring their ships here all the time for repairs. Our spacefaring technology has improved loads since then, but the older ships tended to, uh, fall apart a lot. Like, more than they do now. <laughs> Using the outpost cut down on the number of launches and landings taking place in the village, and also the number of fires. Nowadays, though, it's mostly just me up here raising saplings from timber hearth and keeping an eye on things. Was that you whistling? Probably. Or actually, definitely. The other travelers carry instruments, so they don't bother whistling. You can pick up their music with a signal scope, you know. Best spot for that is usually the North Pole. Great reception. The North Pole. Is marked in red on the mini-map. But the Adel Rock is a pretty small moon, really. Just go north, you can't miss it. Okay, thank you. Talk to you later. 
Well, we started small and... Oh my god. Whoa, there's a geyser there. That's cool. Yeah, someone's there. Can we check out the map and see who that is? The Interloper. Wait, what? Is that a planet? That doesn't seem like a planet, almost. Oh. Maybe we should head towards that next, if we can catch it. <laughs> Maybe I'll walk around a little bit. You don't really got too much going on here, do you? Yeah, this isn't really too crazy, just because it's the moon and we're pretty familiar with it, aren't we? Is someone on the sun? My goodness. Right, so according to that map here, if we go to the North Pole, which should be right here. There's music from really far away. This is the North Pole, people. Esker's Signal Scope Log. Day 48. Still not picking up Rebeck's banjo from Brittle Hollow. I'm sure they're fine, but I'll feel better once I can hear their music. Day 51. Listen to Chirp play for a while today. Unrelated. Someone should tell Porphy and Gosen their flirting is not subtle from an aerial perspective. 55. Banjo music coming in loud and clear today. Sounds like Rebeck's doing okay. That oaf. I was worried. 63. Today I thought I heard something strange. I don't know, it was probably nothing. 70. No, it's back again today, too. Something strange is coming from Timber Hearth. 76. Okay, I know this is crazy, but the sound from Timber Hearth sounds exactly like Feldspar's harmonica. But Feldspar disappeared in space a ages ago. It can't be them. 88. It's still here. This is creepy. Maybe my signal scope is broken? I better talk to Nace. That's weird. Ooh, that sounds scary. That's a uh, giant steep, right? Hmm. But we can hear the banjo. So maybe whoever's on it is doing okay. Is that Timber's hearth? Timber's hearth is... Oh, the one with the geysers. Yeah. That's a harmonica. Weird. Why can we hear that? Can we go back to Esker really quickly so we can get a refuel on the oxygen and... How do we get fuel? I don't actually know. Oh yeah, I can use fuel like this. I don't have to like... <laughs> yeah, trees! Oh, we probably get fuel by going back to the ship. Okay, well, I mean, we can check out this planet right here. It's literally right next to us. We'll see. Maybe look at the ship log. Maybe just fly off because I feel like it. That's what space exploration is all about, baby. Plan? What plan? Just go towards the sun and die a fiery death. <laughs> okay, well, this one's right here. Sure. If we can catch it. This one's really small, though. Are you actually going to the sun? Because I don't think we can do that. Uh, I don't think we can land on this. Oh! Whoa, that was like a cloudy, gassy thingy. It wasn't a planet. Let's see if we can go to Ember Twin then, since it's right here. Oh god! Tch. Maybe I should learn how to land properly. But what's the fun in that?
Dude, I feel like we're right next to the freaking sun. Uh. Oh god. Oh. Exit ship to repair. Headlights damaged. Landing gear damaged. And there's a freaking geyser right next to us. Should I move the ship a little bit? Yeah, just put it on the ground here. Lord. Oh no. I'm wrecking the ship already. Landing gear. So I guess that's sort of the problem too, because if we go to a planet with no trees, then we have a limited amount of oxygen and we gotta get out ASAP. So that's something that we'll have to be careful about. Okay, this is good. We don't have to like collect supplies or anything. Yeah, okay. Cool. Now let's see if we can walk to the north pole of this place then. Seems a little bit difficult though. We kind of landed right in the middle between the North Pole and the South Pole. Uh... Maybe it'll be better for me to... Oh. Maybe it'll be better for me to land nearer to the pole here. To one of the poles. Whoa, hold on. Oh, I don't think that should be touching me, right? What is that? God. Is that a stream of water? Or like, what even is that? No Mayan technology, maybe? My goal is to get to the North Pole. Pretty simple. Not anything super crazy. Is it this side? <laughs> We've gone to the South Pole actually. But I noticed here. Was there something on the edge here? There was like a little circular thing I thought I saw. Yeah, that. What's that? Um... It's sinking. Can we wait for it to unsink? I'm kind of uncomfortable with how close to the sun we are. It's kind of nuts right now. Dude, the whole thing is sinking. Maybe we should just try to land on that thing right there. I mean, I guess we can. Oh. Should I do that with my ship or should I just try to um, go over there by myself? No. Hey, who's on this planet? Can we find out who's on this planet? Yeah, there's someone on the North Pole. We have to get to the North Pole. If we can. Whenever I'm in this mode though, I feel like I don't know the directions or anything. Oh, what the heck is that? Hold on. We gotta settle down here. Yeah? Whoa. No, 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 no. Oh, we kind of landed right on the thing. <laughs> what is this? Oh! We found a thing, but how do I like record this? I wonder. Can I just take a photo of it? Oh. Um... 
I think we found some Nomayan mysteries here. The question is though, what do I do about this? Oh? What the? Oh. Why are you suddenly moving so fast? I'm trying to look at the symbols right now, but they don't particularly match the other ones, do they? Oh, wow. Oh. Okay. I guess I should try and see what this is all about. Nope. Trees detected. Thank you. Chert's research notes, property of Chert. Clearly, the Nomai were making astronomical observations here. They chose an excellent spot. Wait, what's that noise? Oh! Whoa! The time loop. 